we've been zooming pretty hard this past month, so, you know, let's just donut and chill. Donut and chill. That sounds ill. Just wait for it to vibrate, you know. We're doing things all electronically now. In case you're wondering, we are shooting on the uh, Lumix uh, 25 mil, uh, I think this is the 1.7 or something like that. <coughs> 1.8, I don't know. Oh, and this camera right here is the GH5, but it's running into the uh, ATEM. <laughs> That I believe actually 400 ISO, um, 360 Ds. Some to those effects. <laughs> I don't know because all that screen information is on the back. I got a clean feed so I can't see it on these monitors. Oh. Snippity snip. Let's take a look at this shit. Hit <coughs> me on the hit. So I am sure that three or four of you have noticed um, that I've been uploading uh, music um, this past month as you're waiting for other content to drop. Um, I am sorry and you're welcome, maybe, if you enjoyed it. Uh, any root, any woot. Um, so we talked a little bit in my update video a little while back, and we actually just now filmed that, but prior to this, but, um, you know, <coughs> I, uh, I found my groove back, long story short, and one of the things as I did this that I ended up buying was the, uh, Zoom R4. So over the past month or so, <coughs> I've been putting off all the other videos that I've got already filmed and waiting to be edited, uploaded, yada, 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 as I'm doing test recordings on this. And, um, yeah, so now I've done, I think, all the testing, really, that I need to do to give you a fair, honest review on it. Um, so, yeah, let's get into that. And uh, before I do, um, there is a playlist of all the material that I recorded through the testing. Some of those videos, especially on the acoustic ends and the instrumental ones, are currently unlisted. I don't know if I'm going to make those public before whatever. Um, but I'm going to post a link to that playlist in the description. So if you pull up the playlist uh, from my profile or my list of profile uh, playlists, whatever, uh, on my channel. Uh, you might not see those videos, but if you follow the link down in the description, you should be able to pull up all of that material. All in all, it's about 20 minutes per section and about an hour, almost an hour and a half uh, worth of material. Okay, if the battery dies on this thing uh, while we're recording as you can see there's not much left on it then I will plug it into the USB because it does work on USB power as well um, anyway so first let me tell you some of the things that I do like about this unit because um, you know for the price and what it is it's I actually think that it was a good buy um, the microphone is surprise built-in microphone is surprisingly decent uh, for that, you know, scratch boarding ideas or just, you know, you don't have anything else. You just need something quick to record an acoustic or, you know, whatever, or a hand drum, whatever, you know, it will work uh, pretty decently through this mic. The microphone is pretty well tuned and everything. Um, you can switch back and forth between the uh, input on the front and that microphone input as well. Um, and you got four tracks. Uh, you've got the bounce track is dedicated. Um, you've got built-in rhythm uh, that you can play along to, which we will, uh, you know, talk about more uh, later on. Um, but 
The built-in effects are okay-ish. Um, that was the final testing was using the built-in effects. All of the effects for all of the other tracks were provided either from the uh, the Line 6 Pod Go or the uh, TC Helicon Voice Live Touch 2. Um, and some of the effects on the final test uh, that we did, which we'll get to later, uh, it, of course, um, were done uh, through plugins on the uh, computer. Uh, so, yeah. There's not much bad I can really say, you know, as far as the intended use. What is this good for is really it's the best thing about it is when you're on the go um, or, you know, and you've got a song idea or something like that, you know, kind of like a notebook thing. And then you could go and record other parts. But as you will see, it is capable of, uh, you know, expanding uh, recording those initial multi-tracks and then taking them onto the computer and, uh, you know, making something more serious out of them because uh, bringing myself to, you know, the things that I don't like or that could be improved upon, um, that is, uh, you know, one of my things is, and this is, you know, uh, two-sided or whatever you want to call it, um, because that's my first thing is, uh, oh, uh, there it goes. It just turned itself off. Well, uh, let me uh, pull the USB cord up here real quick, and we will fix that. Uh, there we go, and now I just have to power it back on. Um, I do have Eneloops in here, so I'm just going to have to go recharge them. Uh, anyway, so... Mixing down on this thing, in my personal opinion, forget about it. Uh, I mean, you can do it, and they do have a, uh, it's sort of like an automation thing when you're uh, bouncing your tracks down um, so that, like, uh, you can either just do the quick bounce and it takes your four tracks and puts them onto a single track and then clears up for four more tracks, or while you're bouncing the track, you can do it in real time. Uh, so that you can automate the faders as you go, things like that. And, uh, it, you know, I mean, it works. Um, I did not use the automation features uh, or, you know, the uh, whatever, because, you know, I understand how that works, and that's kind of pointless for me, uh, because the reason that mixing things down on this is uh, forget about it or whatever for me is because, you know, these little short throw faders it's really really hard um to get a precise mix with faders this short uh just point and simple uh you know maybe you can you know do a little better than i can with my nervous hands and everything but you know but if they made the faders bigger then that's also going to increase the size of the unit and this is already just barely small enough that you could carry it in your pocket or something like that, you know. So you really don't want this thing to be any bigger than it really is. That's uh, part of the attraction to it to me. You know, the three big selling points was the size of the unit, the fact that it's 32-bit float both as a recorder as an, and as an interface, which, yes, we did test, and we'll talk about that later. <laughs> But, you know, yeah, and, uh, you know, yeah, the size of it, the, you know, the 32-bit float and uh, the uh, bounce track, you know, having a dedicated bounce track on something like this that's limited to four tracks is, God, I don't want to use the term game changer because it's so cliche to use that in a YouTube video now, but, uh, you know, Traditionally, on a uh, digital multi-tracker or even a cassette multi-track, you really don't want to bounce too much on, you know, those old analog uh, multi-tracks because, you know, it degrades every time you do it. But since it's digital, you know, you pretty much maintain the resolution the whole way through as you're bouncing tracks. Um, so you could do it an infinite number of times, theoretically at least, 
But like when, you know, I used to do it on my old, uh, what was it, the Fostex FD4 um, back in like around 99, uh, you know. If you bounced the track, you lost the track, essentially. So you'd have, I think the Fostex had eight tracks, if I'm not mistaken. So then after you bounce the tracks, that takes up one of your eight tracks. So now you've only got seven more to work on. Um, and with eight tracks, you know, you can kind of get by with that a little bit better. And I mean, you can on a four track too. It's just that, um, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a pain in the ass, um, you know, and it's, it, it is a little bit limited. So I like having that dedicated bounce track. So every time you go through, you've got all four tracks to work with. Um, also, uh, let's see the other thing, you know, Maybe they can make this, you know, in a future version, another version of this or something. But this thing really needs to have Bluetooth in it. Not for connecting a phone or, or not for connecting music or anything like that, streaming or whatever, but so that you can have an app. Uh, you know, I would have been happy if they had to just put one of those, you know, buy extra receivers like the H3 has, um, because I already have that Bluetooth, Bluetooth receiver, um, you know, but being able to operate this with an app on your phone would fix so many of my issues with this thing. One, because you could have a nice big fader that takes up the size of the uh, phone screen or a tablet, even better, you know, have a nice huge throw on that. Um, as well as like navigating the, the these menus is kind of a pain. So like say I want to make some, you know, get into like I've got here's uh, make a new project. This is where you know you would go on file to like import files and you know do any customizations uh, whatever whatever. And uh, then. You've got your uh, tuner here, which, you know, is actually not a bad tuner. Um, to be honest, it's, uh, you know, it's actually not that bad. Uh, there's the, uh, <laughs> I'm not used to trying to use this thing upside down, so uh, forgive me. Forgive me. And then, of course, you got your settings over here. But this isn't where it gets bad, you know. Another area that they could have improved on this is just found a little place maybe over here or something to have a directional pad to use with a little uh, click button center um, so that you don't have to like go over here, go over here, go over here, go over here. Uh, but this isn't the bad part. The bad part is when you want to uh, make adjustments to the track. Like say the first track that I used, um, you know, I was using the stereo outputs on the pod go for my guitar and the bass, for my guitars and the bass. And so, you know, you want to pan those. Well, here you've got to click down and uh, uh, this is, I'm sorry, hard to do. Uh, and, you know, then you click enter, then you make the adjustments. Uh, then you, you know, do each little thing that you need to do like that um, is time consuming and tedious. Uh, well, let's uh, go back, go back, go back. And, you know, and it's the same thing like when you get into your effects here or, you know, even your rhythm track here because, you know, you want to be able to switch between the patterns, there are regular drum beats and off patterns and regular metronome and all of that stuff here uh, as well. But, uh, you know, you wanna, you're going to want to change your tempo. You're not going to want to record everything at the same tempo. And, of course, the same with the volume for it. You may want the pre... The pre-count is off by default. I turned that on separately. And you don't have any customization over any of that either. Um, so you get four bar, or well, I guess you get one bar. You get four counts um, for that, and that's it for the pre-count. And that brings me to another con, which is plugging in the bass, because sometimes for a bass, 
um, and we ran into this problem definitely on the last recording, uh, was... There's no pad, there's no options to add a pad or an attenuator or, you know, anything like that. So, you know, the bass signal can drive a lot harder um, than the guitar signals, um, even with a passive bass, um, because, you know, the bass that I'm using right now is a passive bass, and it still drove a little bit much. And the uh, bass amps that are on here, I cannot... You know, that was the biggest problem on the last one that we did because the bass track or <laughs> the bass amps on here, I could not get a good clean sound from. Um, I should have just given up on that and recorded it straight um, because it sounded cleaner without the amp on it at all, um, to be honest. And, you know, the guitar amps too were like you know there was a couple good overdrives and fuzzes and then that was pretty much it the rest of them all kind of sounded the same the high gain one was in my personal opinion was terrible um and then the uh the the effects were a little bit more gracious uh the effects sounded a little bit better there was a decent auto wah actually on there, uh, which I didn't, I don't think I used. Maybe I did. I'm not sure. There's a couple okay filters, a tremolo and some stuff on there, but you don't get much flexibility over any of it really on here. Um, so, you know, when it comes to mixing down and adding your effects, you're much better to, you know, take this with you on the go and, you know, record uh, whatever you want to record and then move it all to the computer and mix it down there and then you can add more effects through plugins and things like that onto the computer and then if you're recording it at home um, it's not you know it's not on the level of like the inbox studio that I'm using now uh, as an interface but it does work fine as a, as an interface um, you know, so it can get all your basic needs done one way or another. So, um, yeah, I don't think that I'm really forgetting anything on here. Um, let's just show you, you know, these basic menus. Uh, that's the inputs, so you can, uh, you know, choose your inputs here, like input A, input A+, plus, input B, uh, input B, whatever and you know or nothing and then if you switch this to the mic position instead of saying uh input a it will say mike see mike hey mike how's it going mike and uh let's just switch that back and yeah um and then the oh that's uh i guess we gotta exit out of that okay yeah and then this is, as you can see, you only get the uh, two parameters uh, for your amp models as well as your effects block. Um, and that is all you get uh, for blocks is one effect, one amp model. That's it. Um, you know, so it's not very in-depth on that, like, at all. Uh, but then the uh, rhythm, you know, is a little bit more in depth. It'll get the job done. It'll get the job done. And I'm sorry, I just showed you all that twice because I forgot that I had already shown you the uh, all of that. Yeah. So, all right, we're gonna cut up and uh, well, let me uh, explain the projects before I actually start showing you. And uh, you know, there's really nothing to show you as far as the acoustic stuff. All of that was uh, was just me playing and singing with the acoustic, you know, testing the built-in microphone on it. Um, you know, so there's not really a whole lot going on there. So we got four tracks to show you. Of course, the last track is actually three tracks in one, but, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, so the first one that we did was Tummy's Groove. Where 
I was basically just testing recording everything internally on here. Everything was recorded internally. Uh, and then, then we did uh, Born to Lose. Dead, uh, dead thing before it in the playlist, um, and then we recorded dead, or uh, excuse me, born to lose was to te was the initial test of this as a recording interface onto the computer, um, and then Wild Thing continued that test essentially, even though you know there was no problems really um, with the first test but we wanted to uh, test that but also using the internal microphone uh, to record the acoustic guitar Well, actually, before we recorded Dead Thing was when I did uh, recorded just myself playing acoustically. Um, if you saw already the Postmodern Lonely Nights video, that was the first in those uh, ones that we did. And I did a whole bunch more. I sat here and played for probably two hours. <laughs> And just, uh, you know, most of it sounded like shit. Uh, not that the stuff I'm not showing you sounds great, but, you know, the rest of it was shit. Um, so then we did Dead Thing. And, uh, you know, to test both as an interface and recording internally, or <laughs> recording through the microphone, excuse me, um, through the internal microphone. And then the final one that we did was Polly, uh, Polly something in the way, and then my little jam session, I'll call it, hey, don't touch my funky thing. silly however you all look at it uh, but yeah uh, that was to test uh, well that was actually kind of a two-parter test but the second part had nothing to do with this at all um, the uh, big thing that I wanted to test was recording internally on here but using the built-in effects um, so I only I recorded three of the guitars with the built-in effects, which include one of those guitars being my bass. Uh, and then the other ones were, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. Uh, the other ones was with the Cabernita and the, uh, oh, what was the other one? I think the Les Paul. 
um, I plugged in and recorded internally. And I had a lot of problems making that last one. Um, but, you know, we might talk about that when we get to it. So without any further ado, let me switch over to the computers uh, so we could talk about each of those four projects. So basically what I did for Tommy's Groove here is uh, I just, you know, that boy wasn't right. So I recorded uh, I, first while I was waiting on the R4 to come because I knew I was going to do this. I'm smart like that. I made the uh, drum loop in uh, sonar. Or not sonar. Oh my God. Uh, now I'm going way back in Studio One while I was waiting on the R4 to actually show up. And, uh, yeah, so I recorded everything internally, so, uh, you know, I, I didn't really, uh, feel like I needed to put it in Studio One, which I should have, uh, because, you know, as you could see in my, uh, Fairlight page, you know, this got way out of control, uh, you know, for audio tracks. This was definitely something... Um, I would have been better suited to doing uh, in Studio One. Uh, and I had parts muted because, you know, when I was making the... Uh, oh, that one actually should stay muted. Uh, whatever, I'm done with this shit anyway, so it don't really matter. But, I, you know, I was making the different versions, uh, so that's why there's all that. Um, so I'm not going to bother playing a clip through this because, you know, you can hear... Uh, the results in the actual video for it. Um, it was a, it, this was a really, this was probably the most fun out of all of them. Uh, well, I actually, I don't know if I'd say that. It was the less frust least frustrating because I pretty much got straight to it. Um, but on the next track was where I began learning my way of actually doing this, <laughs> doing things a little bit differently that is hopefully going to uh, encourage and enable me to do things better in the future. Uh, so uh, just to recap a little bit for this one, the effects uh, all came from, uh, or the guitar and bass effects all came from the Line 6 Pod Go, and the vocal effects all came from the uh, TC Helicon Voice Live Touch 2. Um, no effects internally from the unit. I didn't use the microphone on the unit. This was this test. The only thing that didn't come directly from this unit uh, was the drums, uh, because I put together loops on uh, in Studio One first. Um, but I can't remember for sure if I did uh, used much in the way of oh great my plugins would be on the other screen so you can't really see um all right well let me uh turn off this dual monitor thing uh for a minute and uh you know so you can see my thing okay yeah so i did use let's see uh voice isolation uh and uh level control pretty much across the board oh no I didn't uh, okay that's I thought that was weird that's right okay so I you I did use nectar 3 it looks like I think those were for the uh, vocals um, and that's just to uh, you know kinda like EQ and compress I don't think I really yeah I didn't use any like actual effects and they're pretty much all the same uh, throughout it so uh, you know the only thing I really most other than you know that the only thing I really did with the audio from here was just edit it and uh, you know mix it down because again mixing down on the R4 forget about it forget about it so alright let's move on to the next track just to uh, show you, you know, I did get a little bit more in depth on stuff because I was, you know, testing this as a recording interface um, for a bunch of this. Uh, so before I try to play you any sample or anything like that, um, I don't know if I really need to for this, but um, 
you know, well, I guess I don't really, because all of the effects uh, from this, for the guitars anyway, came from the uh, Pod Go and all of the vocal effects. I've, or no, actually, the vocal effects are both uh, from here as well as the uh as well as the voice live touch uh, the only thing i did also add um i don't know why i said the only thing but i did also add uh i don't and i don't know why it suddenly turned all the way down um but i added the triple play and used my synth guitar uh on here uh why is it like that uh I don't know why it's turned all the way down. Oh, that's right, because I automated it. Um, I automated it. I'll just give you a... Uh, I'm, I'm not going to turn the sound on yet, but I'll just, you know, give you the preview of that so you could see, you know, uh, that's what I mean by automation. Um, so it's basically like programming the fader or any other parameter, uh, really, um, to, you know move over time essentially or whatever you want to call it you know just don't call me a chocoholic even though i am whatever <laughs> so yeah this was just a test of uh using it as an interface and then mixing it down on studio one um i was yeah every time i go to record my vocals it seems like is when my voice kind of like bottoms out and doesn't want to work and cooperate right but that being said you know i mean i think that they actually turned out pretty okay um for being durable <laughs> uh, yeah um so you know yeah just to give you an overview of that test uh, and i will say i think that um you know both of those first two tests um oh yeah i need to give you the rundown of how i recorded this um uh, I'm sorry, I'm stoned and trying to skip over details. Uh, but, you know, uh, I think that both the first and this test, well, actually, I, really about all of them uh, were pretty successful, except for the effects. I, uh, I'm a little bit disappointed by the effects, uh, or, you know, they could definitely be better. Anyway, so how I started this one, um, and this kind of gave me a better idea on a better way to approach me recording in the future um, I mentioned this in the update video you know traditionally what I've always done is try to come up with the drum track with the music part in my head and then you know make the drums from that um, well so what I did with this track was that I recorded along to the guide track from the rhythm section on the R4. So I guess this was a test of that too. Um, and then I came back and built some loops. Um, where is the uh, loop tracks? It's, uh, I don't know which one was the, because I didn't properly label stuff for some reason. Um, I got all of the instrument tracks, but not the, uh, I guess, yeah, I guess these were the, uh, the drum tracks here so you know yeah basically i recorded along to the guide track at um what was the tempo at 90 beats per minute and then i toned this to 90 beats per minute so that the tempo would match and built my drum loops from that and you know that was a flying success uh, that really turned out to work better than i assumed it would and that is probably going to be one of my methods of recording um, going forward. I did run into a problem with that. Um, well, really both in Dead Thing and on uh, the Polly's Funky Thing, because, uh, but you know, I guess we'll, well, we'll get to that, especially under Polly's Funky Thing, because it took me about a week <laughs> to finish that off. Um, so yeah, let's close this one out and go get my mouse back on this screen so this was uh essentially where is my mouse there we go this was uh those acoustic recordings um so as you can see there's a total of uh well i know that there was way more than 
uh, for, oh, that's because I've got the uh, loop on. Let me get rid of that real quick. My in and out points. So yeah, the total recording, even though I already edited a little bit of this out, but the total length is about an hour, a little bit over an hour. And, uh, you know, yeah, there, um, well, let's play a little bit and just, you know, you can hear. I am sorry about the buzzing. Oh, yeah, this is where we were doing the, uh, you know, <laughs> recording be like that sometimes. You know, I probably did this song about five or six times before, you know, I actually felt comfortable uh, with it. Uh, you know, but that's how uh, that's how it goes. If you've ever seen the movie La Bamba, um, where Richie Valens is in the studio, I think is when he's recording Odana, and uh, you know you see him visibly getting frustrated because you know it's like, let's do that again with more emotion. Let's do that again with blah blah blah. Let's do that again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again and again and again and again and again, till you've recorded. <coughs> The same goddamn vocal track, you know, for like 20 hours straight. That's how it be. <laughs> that is how it be. That is how it be. At least if you're, you know, trying to get something that sounds fairly decent. And for me, it's like that just to get something, you know, that doesn't make your ears bleed. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's pretty much, you know, uh, straightforward right there is just me playing uh the acoustic there was one that i did uh there well actually it was probably a couple but i only uh kept one of them of me playing the uh little traveler bass the here 100 cower through that's what i always do <laughs> you know and i ran into uh you know problems with this one too but you know it's just because i suck um I'm not all that great. But, as you can hear, uh, you know, generally, the microphone actually sounds pretty good. Um, this is, you know, just from Postmodern Lonely Nights right here. Um, So, you know, you see it, you know, yeah, the microphone is actually pretty, pretty fucking decent for what it is. And so, you know, my method for uh, recording, my thing for recording Dead Thing was, uh, you know, pretty much the same as the last, except for um, also utilizing that internal microphone. Well, I guess not the last, because the last before this was all of those acoustic recordings. Um, but, you know, from Born to Lose. Uh, you know, the only things I did differently, really, on this one um, was, uh, you know, that I also additionally used that, that internal microphone. Um, let me see if, uh, which one, um, damn, did I not, yeah, I don't think I labeled these ones at all, so I don't know which one the acoustic is. Uh, okay, so we'll just solo that and play that through oh that is the uh, wrong track i am sorry um, so yeah that's uh then i'm going to turn my microphone off for a second yeah um i had to edit a part because i kind of i I kind of got it a little screwed up right there, but, you know, just to show you, you know, I did have to uh, go back and, you know, redo, re-record this one a few times before I felt comfortable with it. And, like, even at that, you can see, like, there's a little part there that I edited off of the acoustic. Um, oh, I forgot to uh, change the mode on that. Whatever. Um, but, yeah, so... And um, that worked out pretty good. Um, so this is the one um, that I really need to, uh, you know, let you hear. Um, because there is, you know, such a mixture 
of things for this one. Um, so let's just, uh, we're going to just completely forget about uh, all of my vocal tracks here. We're just going to cut that out, cut that one out, cut that one out. I think that this was a uh, vocal track too, and this one was not what it sounds like. Um, <laughs> so we'll play one by ones, I guess. Uh, okay, so the Cabranita is the one that had the, uh, I guess the fuzz or whatever amp. Um, they didn't really give these things proper names, <laughs> uh, in the software. Oh, it might help if I turn the sound on. So you can see, um, you know, for what it is, uh, you know, for that kind of tone, if that's what you're looking for, it's not that bad. Um, and let's see, I believe that I also uh, recorded internally with the Les Paul, so... Uh, oh no. I take that back. Les Paul was, uh, I used the uh, native, Helix native. Um, so the bass I did, so now you can kind of hear what I'm talking about with the bass. Although I did throw on a D-Clip uh, plug-in uh, to get rid of that. So let's hear it without that. You see what I'm talking about with that drive? And then... And see, even with RX-10, there's a little bit of that there. Um, it's just hard to get rid of. Um, and then... Uh, it was, let's see, it was that one. It seems like there was another one on here. Oh, I guess, the, yeah, the acoustic. Um, we did use some, uh, like, uh, a chorus and stuff on the acoustic, but we left off the amp modeling. Um, I think it was just the chorus effect. on the tray so yeah I mean it's kind of hard uh, to like uh, you know pick out the who's effects uh, on their own on the finished track which is why I wanted to like actually show you those uh, here because like you know here all together well let's uh, go back uh, and hear it all together so you could see what I mean especially for the non discerning whatever <laughs> disconcerned whatever listener um, you know it's kind of hard to spot but I uh, see you know hey how's it going dude can you pick out the different effects I'm just a listening with it all together. Hey, how's it doing, guy? It's okay to eat fish if you're really freaking hungry. I said that line too soon, cause I 
Lost my place and I'm stupid My fans on the track Or whatever. I am sorry for being so stupid, but you know, you get it. You get where I'm coming from. I hope. I think maybe. Uh, so then the uh, this was the only one that I actually used. Easy Drummer Three Four, um, and I am so glad, so fucking glad that I bought Easy Drummer Three because. It's going to make my life a lot simpler, you know. I might be performing for an audience of one or <laughs> whatever, but, you know, it's going to make my life so much, so much easier. Um, so the problems that I had um, recording this was, like, I would try to record along to the God track, and I just could not get anything that I was ultimately um, satisfied with. So what I ended up doing was uh i took the second to last or the last before doing it the new way <laughs> uh, that i you know recorded and i went ahead and i created the drum track using easy drummer three and then i listened back to it decided that i was unhappy with the guitars the bass and pretty much everything other than the drums so then what I did was I imported it over, I took the drums, I created a whole new project, took the drums, imported them onto the R4, and then uh, recorded uh, along to that with the guide track. So basically I had the guide track and the drums from Easy Drummer, um, and then recorded the guitar and bass parts or at least those two guitars and the bass part to that. Uh, and then later I recorded the other guitar parts and stuff uh, directly to the computer. The other thing that I was testing uh, with this was because I had just got both the, that Cabernita guitar as well as the Inbox Studio. So part of that was also I was not using the R4 as the interface to record the other guitar parts. Just because I wanted to try out the Inbox Studio, maybe I should have done something, waited and done something completely separate for that. But I don't know. Um, I did it the way that I did it. <coughs> um, and I am very, very fucking happy, though, um, with the Inbox Studio, too. Um, just 100, 100. Um, that was everything I needed in an interface and a lot more. The only downside to the R4 that it has, obviously, is the lack of the 32-bit float. But it's got all the pad and uh, attenuation and everything that I could possibly need, um, as well as, you know, my... Stu anyway, this is not a review video for the Inbox Studio. It's for the R4, so I'll get on track with that. So, yeah, basically, that's how I did it. And then I recorded, you know, every this whole 10-minute, all three songs... There's just one continuous recording. If you listen closely, everything is at this one, 110 uh, beats per minute tempo. And then the last part is literally just me jamming randomly. <laughs> uh, you know, I came up with that funky little riff, that little bounce, bounce, bounce. Um, and, you know, I started having fun with it, and I just jammed on it, and that's what came out. And I decided to go ahead. I promised in the Don't Eat the Gum video, which you will have seen before this, but you will have seen the uh, this track, hopefully, you chose to watch it, um, way before. So, uh, I promised in the Don't Eat the Gum video... To, that I was going to use that funky chicken as a musical instrument. And so I did uh, on here. And uh, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. Uh, the funky, funky chicken. We did the funky chicken. So yeah, in a nutshell, um, can I say that I recommend this unit? Absolutely. Um, I mean, if this is what you're looking for, um, if you're just looking... Uh,
shit, focus on me, focus on me, Alamopocus, um, uh, kissing my tokus, uh, if, uh, you know, if you're just looking for a recording interface for $200, okay, you could probably do better, um, and maybe not worry about the 32-bit float, you know, 32-bit float is helpful, um, because you should know how to gain stage without 32-bit float. That's a skill that anybody recording needs to know. But, but, it's the same as uh, uh, using AI technologies um, built into programs like uh, Isotope Ozone, um, you know, when they're like a virtual assistant technology and everything that was well, not really AI, but that's what we call it now, algorithms. Um, but, you know, 32-bit, I look at 32-bit float like those. And like uh, back in my DJ days, you know, using the sync button to match tempos, it's not about cheating or whatever you want to call it. It's about taking a shortcut to save time and produce efficiency, you know, to be able to do more um, because you've got more time. You know, like in uh, Ozone, using the virtual assistant, you're not going to get a perfect master or anything, you know, using their virtual assistant, but it gets you to the tweaking phase a lot faster, allowing you to be more productive. Um, and the same with 32-bit float. You should know how to gain stage, but if you're going out into the field recording something you don't and you don't have to worry about taking the time to gain stage then you're able to get to the recording faster and be more productive be more efficient um you know shortcuts aren't entirely a bad thing uh <clears throat> but you know for two hundred dollars though you could get a better interface just without the 32-bit float. And Zoom does also have another recording interface that is just a regular connect to the computer interface, whatever, um, for I think around the same price um, that does include 32-bit float. Um, but I don't think it has much more advantage over the R4 um, as an interface, to be honest. I think it might have MIDI. Um, you know, that is one absolute deal breaker for me for this as a regular interface is that there's no MIDI. Um, the plus, you know, the lack of a pad. The other Zoom interface, I don't know. It might have a pad and uh, some attenuation adjustments, um, but I'm not sure about that. <coughs> uh, however, you know, if you're looking for a portable recorder, a portable multi-track recorder as a musician, there are other palm size, you know, compact recorders and stuff like that. And I can't speak to a lot of them because I haven't bothered with a lot of them. Um, this one just kind of caught my eye when I had the money to buy it. And so I bought it and, um, you know, I can definitely recommend it as a portable, like, sort of notepad as a musician or just a portable recorder for serious projects because, you know, if you're going to um, be recording bass or anything hot like that, I would recommend running it through something to soften the input first. Um... But, you know, for recording your basic guitars, vocals, things like that, you can get fine, perfectly fine results out of this and then import it to the computer where you do all of your, you know, serious work. Um, and for that, you know, it's great. It's dope. It's awesome. You know, I like it. I love it. I'd love some more of it. I would like, you know, like I said, I would absolutely love a version of this that had Bluetooth features uh, with an app uh, and stuff. That would make this so much easier to use because diving through the submenus and click this to click that and then click back 
and then click this to get back to that, you know. Uh, when you're having to do that a whole bunch of times, you know, it gets so time consuming um, and it's so clunky um, to do it that way. I understand, you know, to build something this compact to do all of that stuff directly on the unit, you have to make some compromises. Um, but a little thumb pad would have gone a long way and a, uh, you know, a Bluetooth app for your smartphone or your tablet, you know, would take this that much further. Uh, at that point, I would say at 199 just buy, pay, you know. Although, I mean, I'm like I'm saying, you know, now, it's still worth the money. It's still worth your $200, in my personal opinion. Um, so, yeah, um, I hope that this was as informative um, as possible, uh, you know. Check out the playlist down in the description. Uh, we're going to start working on more uh, music stuff. Um, even if I'm the only one listening to it, I guess. Um, but, you know, music, as I said, is my first passion. And it's fitting to be my last passion. Uh, so here we are. You know, but yeah, if you want to hear the examples of this better in depth, you know, check out the playlist down on the bottom I've, uh, in the description. I've sorted everything, not really in order, um, but I put the first, you know, full accompaniment, whatever, songs first, and then is the acoustic songs that I decided to keep, and then is the dressed down mixes of the initial four song, four tracks, and then the instrumental versions of those same tracks. That's the order of how the playlist is. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoy. And uh, I hope that, yeah, I hope that I can uh, be in, that I've been informative and helpful <laughs> about this unit. I love you, baby, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!